I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area. This is John Marston. Like all our favorite Rockstar Games protagonists, Red Dead Redemption's main man is a mess of moral failings and intensely interesting character development. But back in 2010, John Marston also brought something new to Rockstar's table, a sincere tragedy that left players grieving for years. Marston laid the groundwork for what is certainly Rockstar's greatest achievement in RDR2. And for that, his story and legacy deserves to be chronicled. When Rockstar first released Red Dead Redemption, it was immediately met with high praise from critics and players alike, due in no small part to the character of John Marston. Sure, the game world was gorgeous, the gameplay was tight, and there was a ton of extra content, but all of it paled in comparison to John Marston and the story written by Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser and the rest of the writing team. Now, Rockstar has always played with using profound themes under layers of carnage and chaos in their games, but there's no arguing that there was a sharp uptick in the quality with RDR. Setting the game on the American frontier gave the devs the opportunity to explore a lot of the deeply troubling real-world history of that location and time period and they don't shy away from it either. In fact, they slap us in the face with it while the credits are still rolling. Well, I for one am grateful, Mrs. Bush, that they are finally bringing civilization to this savage land. That opening scene on the train into Armadillo is the perfect setup, not just for the tone of the game, but for John Marston himself. Everything from the way he sits, arms outstretched to take up as much space as possible, to the way he silently reacts to the conversations around him, to the way he looks in comparison to the more upstanding passengers, tells us a lot about our protagonist. This is a man who has survived a rough life and has come out stronger and more self-assured because of it. A man equipped with a strong set of guiding principles, but with enough sense, or perhaps apathy, to keep his mouth shut when it might lead him into trouble. Essentially, John Marston is a stoic badass harboring a much deeper inner world than he lets on. It's a known Western archetype we've seen on screen before, but very few video games, especially in 2010, were even attempting to bring such a character to gaming consoles. But Rockstar wasn't content to just copy and paste a classic spaghetti Western hero into their game they had to go and make one of the most emotionally jarring and tragic narratives in the history of gaming about family, crime, punishment, and of course, redemption. And it starts way before the events of the first game. John Marston was born to a Scottish father and unnamed mother in 1873. He was orphaned at the age of eight years old, and by the time he was 12, he found himself under the wing of one Dutch Vanderland and his gang of outlaws. Taking on the role of John's father figure, Dutch taught a young John to read, shoot, hunt, and taught me how to see all that was good in the world, much like he did for Arthur Morgan a few years earlier. With his new family of outlaws, John robbed, stole, and murdered indiscriminately, taken in by Dutch's philosophy that they were fighting a good fight in the name of the poor, the downtrod, and the outlaw way of life. Eventually, John would fall in love with a gang-affiliated woman named Abigail, who he married and fathered two children with. Their daughter would pass away, but their son Jack survived. John's wife and son would become a catalyst for change. After several years and many questionable decisions from Dutch during the events of Red Dead Redemption 2, John finally left his life with the Vanderland gang and took up a life of farming as an honest man, trading his found family for his newly created one. Up until that point in his life, John could certainly have been regarded as a less than morally upstanding man. Whether he believed his actions were fueled by good intentions or not, he did plenty of downright evil deeds in the name of the Vanderlyn gang. But for three years, he tried his best to put the past behind him and make a life for himself and his family away from the violence and lawlessness. But if the story stopped there, it wouldn't be much of a tragedy, now would it? An orphaned boy rising from his station to become a land-owning family man on the American frontier would have been an uncharacteristically happy ending for Rockstar. But in classic Red Dead fashion, things are a lot more complex than they seem on the surface. And that's only the beginning of John's story.
Hey y'all, we're gonna take a quick break from this video to talk about a brand that I'm very excited to partner with. They're the ultimate service that protects your internet security and privacy online, and that's NordVPN. As an avid gamer, the best thing about NordVPN for me is how when a game isn't available in the US, I can change my virtual location and buy it that way. Simple. You can also unlock all your favorite games and geo-restricted servers, so you never have to let a location limit where you play. And of course, NordVPN is all about your protection. And with their advanced threat protection feature, it makes browsing safer by blocking intrusive ads, identifying malware-ridden files, and stopping you from landing on sketchy websites. Once threat protection is enabled, it will protect your browsing even when you're not connected to a VPN server. So try Nord risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Visit nordvpn.com slash nerdstalgicgaming to learn more about this exclusive offer. In Red Dead Redemption 1, John struggles to relate to his son who prefers a pencil and paper to a gun and holster. Having never gotten a proper childhood, John is unsure how to give one to Jack and he'd never get the chance to really try because the government would come calling. Agent Ross and his men would take his family into custody and enlist John's help as a bounty hunter to take down the remaining members of his former gang in exchange for the safe return of his wife and son. His sins would be absolved in the eyes of the law, redeemed even. Before the 2018 release of Red Dead Redemption 2, this was already an exciting premise. A man trying to put the past behind him and assimilate into society before being dragged back out into the lawless West is a great setup, even if you don't know much about the protagonist's history, which we didn't back in 2010. The details of John's life before he settled on the farm were pretty hard to come by. We knew he was in a gang, we knew the main players in that gang, and we knew that the leader raised him like a son. But John very deliberately keeps the details close to his chest. With the context of Red Dead Redemption 2, the story of the first game is dramatically and depressingly improved. Now we know the men he hunts. We've seen them drink and joke and spend quiet nights around the fire with the rest of the gang, including John. I was 11, first time I shot a man. His fault, but then <laughs> we all think that all the time. We've seen Dutch's downfall play out and we know what he once was before the events of RDR1. We talked about Dutch and his relationship to both John and Arthur in another video on this channel, but basically, knowing him to the extent we did in RDR2 makes his demise all the more powerful through the eyes of John. These men were friends, fathers, brothers, and uncles to John's own story, and now he's faced with a difficult task of bringing them to justice. The manner in which he does this is ultimately up to the player at least in the case of Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela, but no matter what the choices John makes, the end of his story stays the same. After accomplishing the grisly task, John is not allowed to remain in peace as he was promised. Instead, after sending his wife and son away to save their lives, he is gunned down by Agent Ross and his men, truly ending the reign of the Vanderlyn gang. It's a valiant last stand, and John has the option to take out more than a few men along with him, but there is no avoiding his final fate. He throws down his gun with his last rasping breaths and falls to the ground while the agents turn their backs on John's farm and the body they left in their wake. The most heartbreaking twist ending in gaming history is made even worse by the epilogue, wherein John's son Jack seeks revenge for his father's brutal murder. Looking very much like his father, he finds and kills Ross, continuing the cycle of violence that John worked so hard and ultimately gave his life to end. So after everything, after players spent an entire game as Arthur Morgan, warming to the characters of the gang, coming to understand the motivations of Dutch, and trying desperately to get John to leave and focus on his family, after playing as John Marston who hunted down that gang, watched his father figure fall to his death, and put his own life on the line for the sake of his family's safety, after all that, nothing changed. John Marston's legacy will always be that of robbing, stealing, and murdering. Unlike Red Dead Redemption 2's Arthur Morgan, it doesn't really matter whether the player sees John as a fundamentally good or bad person. His good deeds are not what makes his death so terrible. It's the fact that he went through hell and back, betraying the men he once saw as his family in the quest for a better life. 
Not only did he fail at this, but he inadvertently pushed his own son into the life he worked so hard to keep him away from. Try as John may have in life to distance himself from the decisions of his past, his son is driven to repeat them after his father's death. Nothing he did ended up mattering. And that's why John Marston is such a tragic character. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you're still here, be sure to like this video and subscribe to Nerdstalgic Gaming for more content like this.